So first point on the agenda is question and issues, open forum. Does anyone have anything? Okay, sounds like not. So let's move to the open issues and PRs. I marked two issues here to discuss. I hope it's sharing the whole window and just a single top so you can see them. So uh, the first one is this about uh, the rolling of the mirror maker bridge connect and so on when the certificates or usernames and password change. Uh, I guess Tom shared there some things about future Kafka development. And I guess the question is whether we want to wait for Kafka to make this easier or whether we want to first do something ourselves. Right, Tom? Yeah, there's various things which you know, probably will change in the fullness of time, but of course you can't predict when things are gonna happen, but certainly the Kafka thing, I think will happen um, probably in 1.3. Um, it seems like it's addressing a real issue. Um, um, that's a consequence of KIP 500. Um, yeah, I spent a long time kind of uh, thinking about this yesterday and it's difficult to sort of, there's, there's not, any nice way of, of um, abstracting across all the things that we might want to abstract over, you know, in the, the fullness of time, in particular, sort of thinking about stuff like um, Vault, if people want to store certificates there, for instance, but, you know, we're, we're not really in a position to actually do anything about that yet. So um, the conclusion I came to was that if we're going to do this, then, um, standard sort of suggested approach is, you know, pretty reasonable. But so what is then your view? Should we go for it now or should we wait? Um, if it was me, I wouldn't do anything now. I'd just sort of wait and, you know, maybe six months from now, reconsider it. Um, because I think, you know, in that time frame, certainly the the Kafka stuff should have resolved a little bit. Not that at the moment the the Kafka stuff looks like it's it's not completely clear from the kit, but looking at the PR, it's probably kind of broker only, um, which, you know, isn't what we want for this. We're interested in having the clients do this. I think you could make a, a case that it, for having um, clients automatically reload from, uh, you know, trust stores and key stores, because, you know, I think it's a good fit with Kubernetes with the way, um, you know, mounted secrets work uh, and it avoids restarts. So I think, you know, that is a nice way forward. Um, so, yeah. Or we, we could, you know, just, we could potentially just open a, a kit to say, or, you know, ask the question, basically, um, is this going to be broker only? Um, and if it is, why, why not um, have the ability to do this in a client? But, you know, that only addresses part of the problem for, um, for the reloading of certs because you know the way they're configured through through kafka is the the config points to a separate file which you know is then going to be uh watch um that doesn't address uh things like um scramstar passwords for instance which are not passed uh, in a separate file so you know it's only part of the picture here So I know Standa was looking into it, but he's not on the call. Uh, should we check with him how far he got and unless he has it already done somewhere, postpone it and wait a bit more how it develops in Kafka? Yeah, he's, he's shown me a branch where he's got something 
um, going. So, you know, he has written some code. I don't know um, if, you know, he's sort of gone as far as, you know, writing tests and so on. I mean, from a Kafka point of view, another possible piece of the puzzle could be using a um, a config provider. If the config provider um, sort of uh, reloading mechanism, so the config provider interface has got a way of sort of, in theory, being able to subscribe to changes to keys, um, but in practice, nothing ever calls those methods. Um, but if it did, then you know that would provide a, a route to um, putting the Scramshell passwords, for example, in a, a separate file, um, and then yeah, that would work nicely in Kubernetes. Yes, yeah, so I think one of the challenges which come to my mind around the certificates for loading is how do we want to what kind of format of the certificates we want to use long term. So uh, you can now use the PEM certificates, but if you do it without passwords, then you have to inline them into the properties file, either through a config provider or set them directly there. If you want to load them from files, then for the private key, it requires some password. And the same applies if you want to use the P12 files from, uh, from the file system that also needs a password. And uh, the same would be for Java key stores. So I think it's a bit related to that because the way we deal with it right now is we mount the certificates as spam files. And then during the start of the basically generate a random password, set it in the configuration and we create the PKCS12 stores manually. Uh, if we would, so, but that doesn't work with the reloading, right? Because when the secret changes, the files reload, but it's not the PKCS12 file which reloads. It's actually the, the uh, PEM files which reload, which would need to be converted into the, into the PKCS12 file first. So for that, you would need to have some sidecar doing that, for example. Uh, and if you use the PKCS12 directly from the secrets, as we actually have now, uh, or the encrypted PEM file, which we don't have, then you need to somehow deal with the password because I'm not sure how the password will reload on the Kafka side. Because that's not specified yeah. from file, that's specified in line in the configuration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think there is, it feels like there is something that Kafka could do to work better with Kubernetes here for clients. Um, so I'm happy to take an action to spend a little bit of time trying to think through um, if there's something that we can do on the Kafka side there. Um, and, you know, if I can come up with a bright idea, I'm happy to open a kit for it and see where, see where it goes. Because I mean that would you know be beneficial for a lot more than us. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Anyone has anything else to this issue?
So then the other issue uh, is about SSL principle mapping rules. So uh, this is something what came up multiple times in the past. It's not like every user is asking for this, but there is some interest. So I had a look at this the other day. Uh, the SSL principle mapping rules, they basically define when you use TLS client authentication, how is the username constructed from the certificate? So by default, it basically takes all the fields from the certificate subject and just uh, puts them into the username. But you can configure it to use completely different formats as well, for example. And that's what some users are asking for. Uh, either because they simply want to use something else or they used somewhere else uh, and they are just migrating, for example, or in some cases it's because uh, our user operator works basically only with the CN and it doesn't expect the certificate to have anything uh, else in the subject. So uh, when the user is using their own uh, certification authority for issuing the user certs and that injects there some organization unit organization and so on then basically they get a different username and they cannot use it with the user operator to set the acls and so on so i had a look if this can be made configurable and uh, it's not completely easy because uh, we are using tls client authentication uh, in uh, for the replication and for the control plane and for the communication with operators and so on and if the user configures it and configures it to something weird then they can actually screw up the replication and break the cluster and so on and unfortunately this option cannot be configured on the per listener basis it's supported only as a cluster-wide configuration so I think we have in general three options. We can just say that uh, there was not enough interest and uh, just not do anything and keep it locked as it is, uh, which is obviously the easy option. Uh, we can also uh, make it configurable, but add just some note to the documentation saying, uh, well, if you configure this, then uh, this is the rule which needs to be there, which makes sure that our stuff works and we don't break the replication and so on. And if you screw it up, then uh, yeah, you screw it up and it's your problem. So that's kind of easy, but yeah, I guess it might lead to bad results and clusters not working. So I guess the third option is that we actually let the user configure the rules as they want, but then we basically inject on the beginning our own rule, which uh, will apply to the to the replication and to the internal users. I think that's fairly simple to do because for the internal stuff, we are using the organization uh, io.streamz, and I would expect that nobody else is using it. So I think it's quite likely that the rule inject there. Uh, is uh, not something that will conflict with uh, the other rules uh, which the user might want to add. So yeah, that's uh, what I think are the options. And uh, yeah, I wanted to discuss how do we want to proceed here uh, to see what we think is best. Did you consider the possibility of um, having our own um principle builder because the principle builder gets uh it knows the listener name um and therefore you could special case the replication listener um when building the principle i didn't consider that uh it might not work for that, other reasons does the principle class actually get the information about the uh, SSL principle mapping rules because so what at least what I understood how I understood um, it from the documentation 
was that the SSL principle mapping rules are ignored when the principle builder class is set. There's nothing that would stop your custom principle builder from um, consuming the um, SSL principle mapping rules from the config um, and applying them only for authentication contexts for the non-replication listener. So in other words, I think it would still work. Yeah, then I guess that might be an option as well. Yeah, I didn't look into this. I need to look into it a bit more in detail. I mean, it would connect, uh, commit us to a path of having our own principal builder um, within Strimzy, which, you know, there might be reasons for it against that, which we need to think through. Well, Yeah, I think we need to see how much does it allow us to just pass through the information for the other listeners to the original one, right? Okay, so uh, yeah, I will add it to the issue and we can investigate it or I can investigate it further when I have some time. So any questions to this? Okay, in that case, I don't think we have any open proposals. So I guess we can remove it and then uh, yeah, I'm not sure we want to do the test container because that might be a long discussion. Maybe we should leave it for the end and start with some things which are easier to handle. So uh, we have been asked to do the an, an annual review for prepared annual review document for this year. Any volunteers to do it? I mean, I guess I can, um, if, if you're not able to, Jakob. Well, I'm, I mean, able, you're I'm able, able to, I'm not sure I want to. You're a bit more um, in tune with what's actually going on um, day to day than I am. So should I so do it? Probably, but you know, it, like, if you're overwhelmed, you know, I, I can do it. I can do it. Uh, I'm overwhelmed, but yeah, with other stuff. So, uh, but so there might be something related to that from the incubation thing, which is your storm. Yes, I still need to um, arrange uh, a brief meeting with um, Chris. Uh, I hadn't forgotten, but I haven't done it yet. But I'll I'll get that done today. Okay, so. I think if nothing else, the, the plan about incubation should be mentioned in the annual review. We did that already last time. And I yeah. guess if we want to start it, it might be ideal to kind of do both things together and link them and not send some annual review one day and then two days later, ask for the incubation and so on. 
Yeah, so that's a blocker. So I'll, I'll get on to arranging that meeting with Chris um, ASAP. Uh, let me check. I think we still have some time for the for the annual review. It's October seventeenth. Around incubation, I noticed that Keda recently incubated. Is it worth having a chat with Zbidinek? Sorry, I probably can't pronounce his name correctly. Um, I don't know how involved he was in the process, but he may have some insights into kind of what Keda did and how they found it. Yeah, I think we can check if he was involved in that. Should I do it or do you want to do it, Simon? Or should Tom do it? I'm happy either way. Um... I tell you, you, you and Tom are doing other things. So put an action for me to contact Spinak and um, at least kick things off. Rubelik or Yeah, okay. So the next thing which might be quick is the survey. I guess we still need to finish the review of the questions or Jakub? Yeah, I think so. I haven't think with Standa yet, but uh, I choose the document and I think we work in some comments. So maybe we can, uh, or other maintainers could to go through the questions and maybe do one another review and maybe even add some, uh, some new questions if uh, you have something in mind and yeah, and maybe discuss it next, next community call. Okay, so that's to do for everyone. <clears throat> okay, then uh, this should be quick as well. Drain cleaner. So I think we are ready to do the first release of the drain cleaner, unless someone objects. What should be the first version? 010, as we did with other projects? Yep, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, I don't think Alesh is on the call, but we really need to get him here and discuss how to deal with the Kafka exporter. So uh, it has now new releases. Uh, upstream in the original project, which implements at least some of the issues we had last time, like showing the consumer groups which are not active uh, as well and so on. So, uh, yeah, I think we need to figure it out how to sync back into the original project, but we probably need Alesh for that. And if nobody has anything to the Kafka exporter. Uh, I, I had something to raise, yeah. Sam here. Um, 
So I saw some discussions around JMX earlier this week, and I was chatting to Graham, um, who's from IBM, and we were chatting about maybe updating it because we saw that it's quite back level. Um, so we were going to raise an issue about that, but I, I assumed that that was under the Kafka exporter issue, but I realized after you went through it that it wasn't. Um, but yeah, you... it, it, does that sound reasonable to you? Because I saw some uh, discussions around JMX and you mean the JMX trans utility? Yeah, yeah, JMX trans, sorry. I should have been more specific there. Yeah, I think it would be great if you can look into it and uh, and update it. Cool, awesome. We'll bring it up to date, make sure everything's properly tested as well. Awesome. So to be honest, I don't think anyone from from Red Hat side ever saw the, ever used the tool. So yeah, that's yeah. why it's not easy for, <laughs> for us to actually <laughs> see whether it works when we update it and so on. No, absolutely, absolutely. So so we'll just do the testing, put in any fixes if it's required. Um, awesome. Yeah, that's great. Anyone, anything else before we jump to the test container? Okay, anyway, anyone remembers where we got stuck last time with the test container? Um, I, think I think we were, we, yeah, we were talking about the versioning and people were arguing forwards and backwards about um, the fact that we've got We the, decided to support only one uh, version, right? We do not want to have multiple versions of the Kafka. Well, did we decide that? <laughs> I'm asking. I think this, we, we decided was... that we have that we will have uh, separate images uh, based on the Kafka release. Uh, we will have a separate repository for that, and we end up with these uh, versionings. Like, so we, we've got sort of two different things going on here. We've got the um, image versions, um, and we've got the version of test container, which yes. is then going to use that, right? Um, yes. And the question is how these should relate. And uh, you know, I think it would be beneficial to be able to spin up a particular version of Kafka um, using. Um, you know, a version of task container. So in other words, that the, the Kafka version should somehow be a, a parameter um, when you uh, want to spin up a, a task container. Because that's what you want from a, you know, in in general, from in a testing point of view, it's, it's useful to be able to say, I want to spin up a, you know, a Kafka 3.0 or a Kafka 3.1 or whatever. Um, I would argue, anyway. So I think it's definitely useful, right? The question, I guess, is whether the effort put into that is worth it or not. which is difficult to reason about right now. Um, but if this is going to be a, a separate repo, it's something that, um, you know, more than just us might well be using. Um, and obviously it's more useful to, you know, sort of people outside of Scrimsy um, if they can, you know, have a, a test container that's using their version of Kafka. So I, I, I think it's worth doing for that reason alone. Do I realize that's an unpopular thing to say? And I realize it's not me that will be doing the work. So how would you imagine it? I mean, your version of Kafka, 
we need to have some limit to how many versions we support, right? I mean, it comes down to um, the usual kind of um, problem of the sort of the, the contract between the container and the sort of the thing that is orchestrating it, I guess. But the, the, you know, in this case, what's orchestrating it is test containers. So if we can fix that contract somehow, then you'd have stability and you wouldn't have to release a new version of the of a Kafka, an old Kafka image. You'd just be able to release a new image for as a new version of Kafka was released and then make use of that in the Java code. Do you think that will work with the zookeeper removals and things like that? Sounds like something that will break the interface if we do it now, right? Well, that would need a new version of the test container Java stuff anyway, I think. Um, yeah. So, would you expect them to have completely separate container images for the test container, which will not have anything to do with the operator container images? Yeah, I thought that was where we, that was one thing that we concluded last time. Yes, I agree with the separate images. And we also discussed about uh, the native images, or if I recall correctly, Tom. There was one issue related to the uh, yeah, start. The yeah, the idea that um, Gunnar had with respect to the, um, the class loading um, if we were going to do separate images and they're going to be used for tests, then there's no reason not to use the CDS class data sharing stuff and the JVM to improve the startup time. Yeah. So how would the versioning of the test container work then? Would it have completely custom version numbers? You mean like the jar artifacts? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I would imagine that they would start off at, you know, 0 .0 0.0.1, whereas the images would start off with something else. So that might not be possible unless we want to have completely new artifact because the test containers are already in Maven, right? So we cannot really reset the versioning scheme. It wouldn't be coupled to Kafka version numbers is what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. Okay, so that was this thing, this thing. So does that answer all the questions we had last time? Maros, do you think that 
if these were decisions as an outcome of this meeting that you'd be able to take this forward? I think yes, but I rem I'm not completely sure that we decide all of them because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, don't we have issue related to the transitive dependency or was it, what was that? I don't know that we end up on that. Transitive dependency? Yeah. I'm not sure. You mean transitive dependency on what? Like, I don't know uh, on what, but I know that uh, there was some discussion and we just... So what's got some dependent? I've no idea what you're even... <laughs> but anyway, like uh, we can continue. And I think these, these answers with the versioning are, uh, I think for me, a good start with the repository and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so we still keep the separate repository, right? Because- Yes. Uh, we will have a different images and yeah, we want to. That solves also the dependency issue which we have in the operators repository today. Yeah. So is this what we all agree on and how we want to go forward then? Well, I'm happy with that if Maros is happy with that. I'm happy with it. Jakub, Paolo, Sam? Yeah, I'm fine with that decision. Yeah, fine with me as well. Yeah, that sounds good to me. So how do we name the GitHub repository, test container or test containers? Doesn't the separate, separating the image versions from the test container Java code imply that there's two repos, one for the images and one for the Java code. So test container for Java code. And test container containers. <laughs> Yeah, it's a tricky naming one, this, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's not or, bad, what you're suggesting there. Or just one container. <laughs> I think only one, or... Yeah, I can live with one. Container, container. Sounds like it's nesting. Yes, aggressive. Okay. Uh, sounds like a plan then, I guess. So I guess I can go and create the repositories then. Okay. Uh, or are you ready to work on it starting now, Marsh? Or <laughs> <laughs> I will take a, a few minutes break and after some time I will start. No, I, I mean, if, if you know that you will not have time to work on it now for, <laughs> I don't know, another two months, then we can wait. Uh, I will have a time for that. If you plan don't to worry. work on it soon, then I will go and create them now or soon. I spent some time with parallelism, but I will have time also on this one. So uh, what does it mean for the PR which we have? I think that Tom has uh, one comment to that, and I think we can merge it after it yeah, is resolved. It's, it's very close to ready to merge, I think. I'll take another look yeah. at that if you want, Maros. Yes. 
Thank you. Okay. So that was faster than I thought. I thought we will be here till seven with test containers. <laughs> Not today. So anyone has any other topic, any other business, anything else to discuss? Then I guess thanks everyone for coming and see you in two weeks. Thanks folks. Thanks Jakob. Thank you. Bye. Bye all. Thanks bye.